In this section, we're going to start looking at error handling. Now, this is very important because whenever you make an HTTP request, there are so many things that can go wrong. And you want to make sure that if your call fails, then you handle all errors properly. So this actually is super important whenever you're using the HTTP to make requests over the internet because you know you're gonna make an HTTP call the server can be down you might have some network problems so there are many 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 different things that can go wrong so you want to make sure that if there's an error then the observable will just spit out an error to you so you have to make sure that you have proper error handling in your application so that you can either show some message to the user or take an appropriate action or you can even send a different data to the user so if you try to fetch some information and you can't find it then maybe you can return some local data or something like that which we're going to take a look at in a second so whenever there is an error um, in the observable when you make an HTTP request the observable is going to stop so it's not going to emit anything anymore it's going to stop emitting and it's just going to stop and you won't be able to use that observable anymore because it's not going to emit there's no data it's just going to give you an error so that's the first thing you really need to understand if there is an error, the observable is going to stop, it's going to stop emitting, and you won't be able to use that observable anymore because an error occurred. Now, there are two ways that developers usually use whenever they're dealing with errors. So they can either catch the error and then withdraw it. So they can take the error, maybe they can manipulate it in some way, and then throw the error again to the application or throw it down the line. Or, like I just mentioned, they can catch the error and then replace the error with some default data or some default message so that the user in the front end understands that something just happened and that's why they're getting this type of data. So for instance, you might be fetching some users and you can't find any users and then you send a default user or something like that, or you can catch the error in the, in the case of catch and rethrow, and then you just rethrow some strange, or you look into the error before you rethrow it and then you determine what the cause is and then you show an appropriate message to the user. So it's really gonna come down to how you want to design your application, what are the requirements and things like that. But usually there are two main approaches, the catch and rethrow. When you catch it, rethrow it, you can manipulate it before you rethrow it or you catch it and then replace it. In the case, for instance, if we're fetching a bunch of users, then we can not find them from the remote server then we can just use some local data or something like that. So in the next lecture, we're going to start looking at both catch and rethrow and catch and replace and then we're going to look at some examples.